girls and welcome to Mrs. Hoover's art class. Do you like to play hide and seek? We used to play all the time when my kids were growing up. Today our art is going to be kind of like hide and seek. We're going to make something that will be hidden in our art. But first, let's look at our artist of the day, Paul Clay. Paul Clay loved the drawings of kids and tried to mix that simple style into his own artwork. Some of his paintings remind me of children's art. He was born in Switzerland, played the violin as a child, and loved music. But his grandmother gave him a box of chalk, and he used to draw a lot. So when he became a teenager, he decided that he liked art more, and he moved to Germany to study. His first art was black and white. He thought color wasn't needed. It was just decoration. That is, until he traveled to Tunisia, which is a small country in Africa. There he saw many colors that were different from his native Switzerland. Colors like golden sunlight, amber hills, and orange deserts. Paul Clay was interested in how a painting made someone feel rather than trying just to make it look real. His art is called abstract. That's because the subjects do not necessarily look realistic. He lived around the time of World War II, and at that time the Nazis who were in power in Germany, they said his art was degenerate. I don't know if you know what degenerate means, but that means that they thought it was bad. So he actually had to leave the country. Let's look at another artwork by Paul Clay. What do you notice in this artwork? Do you see letters? Is it easy for you to see the letters? And why not? Do you notice that he colored in the spaces around the letters? Do you know what we call the space around those letters? Let's look at some pictures and see if you can tell. What do you see in this picture? Do you see a vase? Do you also see two faces? There are two faces in this picture that are looking at each other. Do you see them? Now do you see them? The vase is what we call positive space. The area around the vase is what we call the negative space. So negative space is that area around the picture or the item. Let's look at another picture. Do you see the positive shapes on the right? But on the left, the space around the shapes, the negative spaces, has been colored black. Okay, so let's look at this one. What do you see here? You see a chair. But the chair hasn't really been drawn. What's actually been drawn is the space around the chair. The artist actually colored in the negative space. So artists look at not just positive shapes, but they also look at the negative shape, the space around the items that they are drawing and painting. Can you see an example of positive and negative space in my art room? Today we are going to create a painting, kind of like this Paul Clay painting. We're going to use your name and other words for our design. The letters in your name will be the positive shapes. And like Paul Clay's art, we are going to paint in the negative shapes that are created by the letters of your name. This will kind of hide your name in the design. I need to have a pencil and a ruler and my paper that has been cut to be 8 inches by 12 inches. It's a little smaller than the regular size paper. I'm going to make a 2 inch grid pattern on this paper to do this project. So I'm going to need to measure with my ruler. Now when you're measuring with a ruler, there's something to know about rulers. They don't, you have to find the zero beginning of your ruler. Some rulers the beginning is the edge of the ruler, but in this one, see if you can see it, right there, this is actually the beginning where this long line is. That is the zero, that's where the ruler starts. 
So you need to line up with this long line. Every ruler is different. You'll need to look at your ruler and make sure you find the zero part of your ruler. So I'm going to line up on the edge of my paper. I'm not going to go in the middle of my paper, but I'm going to go towards the edge. I'm going to leave a little bit of paper so I can see. And I'm going to measure two inches across this side of my paper. So I'm starting at the two and I'm going to make a little tick mark like that. Not a real long mark, just enough to see. There's four. So I went two inches and then another two inches would be at the letter, the number four. And then if I add two inches to that, of course, counting by twos would be six. And then another two inches would be eight. And then of course, 10. So two, four, six, eight, ten. I have little marks on the edge of my paper. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And if I started at the zero and measured accurately, these will be right across from each other. So again, I'm starting at this line, not at the edge of my paper, but at this line. Line up along this side, and I'm going to make a mark at two, four, six, eight, ten. I don't need to make a mark at twelve because that's the end of the paper. All right, so I've got marks on both of the long sides. And now I'm going to put marks on the short sides. The short sides, it's only eight inches wide, so I don't need as many marks. So I line up, starting at the zero mark, make sure it's straight, hold my ruler down, and make a mark at two, four, six, and then eight is the edge of the paper. Rotate your paper to the opposite side, and again, Okay, now I have tick marks on all four sides of my paper and I'm ready to make my grid. To make my grid, I need to use my ruler and I need to have a good procedure for using my ruler so that my lines are nice and straight. So if I'm right-handed, I'm gonna hold my ruler in my left hand. If I'm left-handed, I'm going to hold my ruler with my right hand. But I am right-handed. I'm going to line it up at the top and at the bottom. Then I'm going to place my hand firmly spread out across the whole page, the whole ruler. I do not want to have my hand just at one part, like up here at the top or at the bottom, but I want to spread it out over the whole ruler. Push down and then I'll draw my line. Okay? Same thing as I go across. Line it up, make sure it's lined up at the top and the bottom. Nice and straight, it should be parallel. Press down and draw a line. Okay, so now I'm going to draw. I've got my lines all the way across, going up and down. I'm gonna turn my paper lengthwise. So now I'm going to draw from the top to the bottom, lining them up again. As you can see down here. And I'm going to go all the way across. So now I have a two inch by two inch grid. So all of these squares are exactly two inches by two inches square. And I have a total of how many? I've got six this way, four rows, six in each row. And if you do your good multiplying math, four times six is 24. So I have 24 different squares. I am going to use these squares with my name and making a positive negative design. So that is our next step. We're going to make a design that we're going to use letters and our name to make an abstract pattern and a design. So first thing we need to do is figure out how we want to do our letters. 
We're going to create a design kind of like Paul Clay did using letters and looking at positive and negative shapes. Here's a picture of all of the alphabet. And let me show you how to make these letters. Now you can make your letters however you want to. You don't have to do it this way, but this is kind of a fun way to do it. So let me show you how we make our letters. We're going to use the actual box, the grid that we made. We're going to use that as part of our letters. So let me start with the letter A. With our letters, we're going to make sure we touch all the boxes. So the letter A, we use our ruler. We're making it very exact today. You don't have to use your ruler if you don't want to and I won't always be using mine. So to make the letter A, I'm just going to go from the very corner to the top to the other corner and straight across. So there's my letter A. It looks pretty much like an A. But if you see the next one, this is the letter B. And this part of the letter B, I'm going to use the side of the box. So I'm not really even drawing this part of the B. I'm just going to use that box. And then the top part of the B uses the top of the box and I do a curve and then I do another curve and I use the bottom of the box for the bottom of the B. That's kind of how we sort of hide it in the box. We don't really care so much if we can read our letters. We are going to use our letters to make our design. We're going to use our name and that is one of the ways that it will be hidden is because it's going to be also a part of our grid. So the letter C, we're going to start here and it goes up and it touches the top of the box and then it curves around here and touches the side. We're going to use the side of the box and then it curves down, uses the bottom of the box and curves up. So it almost doesn't look like a letter C. Same with the letter D. We'll use this line here. That's part of the box. The top of the box is the top of the D. And then we curve around touching the side, curve at the bottom and use the bottom of the box for the bottom part of the D. Now the letter E is very simple really because the side of the box, there's the back of the E, here's the bottom of the E, here's the top of the E and all we really need is this middle line. Whoops, broke my pencil. What we really need is this middle line. And again, we don't worry about whether or not we can read it because what we're doing is we're making a design and we're using our letters as the starting point for our design. So for the letter F, it looks really just like the letter E. Here's the top of the F, here's the side of the F, and then we have this line here for the middle part of the letter F. So the letter G is a lot like the letter C. We start here and we curve around, touch the top, curve around here, we touch the side, curve around the bottom, touch the bottom, curve up to the top, and then we have the line that goes over for the G. The letter H very easy. This is the left side of the H, here's the right side of the H, and then we have a straight line. So there's the letter H. The letter I, even easier. The top of the I is the top of the box. The bottom of the I is the bottom of the box. And then straight down the middle, there's the letter I. So H, I, the next is the letter J. Starts here, curves around, touches the bottom and curves up like that. For the letter K, we're going to draw down here like this and then we're going to draw all the way over like that and then down to the corner for the letter K. And then the letter L, you don't even have to do anything, do you? Because the side of the box is the side of the letter L and the bottom of the box is the bottom of the letter L. The letter M, let's do that over here, the side of the box, and then we go in the corner and all the way down, and then up here to the top and down on the side. And as you can see, can you see what that might also be? Yeah, we can use that for the letter V as well. So M is like that, and then N, the same thing, you use the side of the box, and then you go from the top all the way down and then up again. And then here's the letter M or the letter V that was already in there. The letter O is going to be like another letter. Can you see what other letter it would be like? It's going to be like that letter C because we're just going to curve around and make it curved on all four corners. The letter P, can you guess how we'll do it? 
straight down here, use the top, curve around, and then straight over. The letter Q is like the letter O, only we will add the line like that. And the letter R is like the letter P, only we just add that diagonal line. The letter S, curve, and then we touch the top. We're always touching the sides of our box as much as we can. We want to make a lot of spaces, negative spaces. So we're going to come around, touch this other side, go down, touch the bottom, and curve around like that. The letter T is the same as what other letter? Can you tell? Same as the letter I, isn't it? Because the top of the T is the top of the box, and then we go straight down. And the letter U, can you see where we've already done something that looks like the letter U? The letter J. We can just do over on the left and over the right, it looks like the letter U. The letter V we already talked about looks just like the letter M. We don't even know whether that's a V or an M, but that's okay because we are not worried about whether or not we can read these words. That's kind of the part where it's hidden. All right, so let's do U, V, and we've got a W. So it's kind of like two V's together. We're going to stop right there. So we're going to plan that out a little bit. And then right here, down and then down here. So we're always touching the box. The then the X, very simple. And the letter Y at the corner will go to the center and straight down. And then of course the letter Z, which is going to be the opposite of the letter N, going over and straight down. And then we'll use the bottom of the box. Now let's look and see how you will put your name in here. You see the alphabet, but how are you going to do your name? Let's look and see how we can do that. So let's say that your name is Chris. So we'll start over here and we'll put in a C. You can see I not worry about drawing the top or the sides of the boxes because I'm just letting the box be part of my design. Here's a C, then the last, next letter would be an H and then an R, then an I, and an S. Now let's, we're going to do our last names too. So let's say your last name is Anderson. Well, we could start it here, but of course we don't have any room. And even if we started here, we could put A-N-D-E-R-S, but we don't have enough room. But all you need to do is keep on going, O-N. So if your name is longer, either your first or your last name, longer than this row of six letters, you just keep on going to the next row. In fact, we can say, we can start here and make Anderson start right here. So A, and then over here's the N. This is going to be our D. We go across the top. And then E, R, another S. D-E-R-S-O-N. So I've got the name Chris Anderson, and we can read it because we know what it says, but if somebody looking at this, they may not know what it says, and that's fine. So what do we do with these other boxes? This is where we are going to put in something about ourselves that is something that tells more about ourselves. So let's say this, um, let's say this person likes sports. Maybe they would put in football. 
Or maybe this person likes to dance and they could put in the word dance. Or maybe they would put in the name of their best friend or the name of their dog. Or the name of their mom or dad or their sister. Or the name of their favorite food. Maybe they'd put in pizza or hot dogs. Whatever tells us something more about you is what I want the word I want you to use. So you could put in, let's say your dog's name is Buffy. So look, we would put we could put Buffy in there, or we could put it down here. Or let's say you like to sing. So let's put I tell you what we should do. Let's say let's say you like art. Of course you do. So let's put in art. A and there's gonna be this R around here. And T goes across the top and goes down. Maybe we should put in that we like pizza. I like pizza. So we'll start here. We'll put the P here. And then that I. And I'm just going to drop down here. This will be the Z and the Z and the A. So I've got some of my favorite things, art and pizza, if this was me. And I've got three letters left. I could put in something else that I like that starts with three letters. Maybe I would put in um, cat. I do like cats. I could put cat in here. Or something else that starts with three, that has three letters. Dog. I do have a dog. So I could put dog in there. My little dog Annie, but I can't fit Annie in here. So I think I'll just put dog. So here's my D. There's my O. And here's my G. Now let's say you have some spaces that maybe just one space or two spaces. You could always do something different with those spaces, like put in some kind of little symbols, like you could put in a heart shape or just put in the X mark. This is the ampersand, the and sign, you could do that, or a diamond shape, or a little smiley face, or a spiral. You could even use the numbers. Maybe you put in your age or your birthday or some just a favorite number that you have. Maybe you're, if you're on a baseball team, you could put in your jersey number. And if you can come up with some other ideas too. So don't be afraid to just put in symbols. If you have some spare squares that you don't know what to do with, just feel free to experiment. Our next step is to outline everything with a Sharpie marker. Now you have different choices. You can use a regular Sharpie fine point or you can use an ultra fine sharpie. It gives two different looks. Either one is fine. I think it's a little easier to use just the regular sharpie so that's what I'm going to do today. The first thing you want to do is use your ruler and go over your lines because you want everything nice and sharp and crisp. See how I'm always holding my ruler with my hand on the left? and drawing on the right hand side, that's just a good way to use your ruler and to keep your ruler nice and steady and flat. I spread my fingers out and then I draw on the right hand side. Now my grid is drawn, I'm going to go and draw my letters. I don't have to draw all of the lines because of course I'm using my box for part of my letters. Always touch the box as much as you can, like on the corners, go all the way. We're trying to make as many positive and negative shapes as we can. I can erase any stray pencil lines after I'm finished. I 
I decided to use my ruler. Okay, now we are ready to paint. I have my paints here, and I have a paintbrush, and a cup of water, and a paper towel, and some protective paper to go behind my art. We're going to start painting our picture here, and the point is that we're going to emphasize our negative shapes. Remember, the negative shapes are the shapes that are inside the actual shape. So if this is the letter R, the negative shape would be the shapes inside and that are made by the letter R, not the actual letter R. So, but before we start painting, we need to prep our pans of paint. In order to do that, I'm going to dip my brush in the water, and I'm going to give each pan a drip of water. You notice I'm not touching the paint. I am just putting a drip in there that will start to prep my paint so it starts to soften up. One of the things that's fun to do also is to mix your paints, and in here you'll see this lid right here. This is a great place to mix colors if you want to do that as well. So I think I will start with a red. And when you're using watercolors, one of the things you need to remember is that watercolors bleed together. If I paint a red next to an orange and they are both wet, they will bleed together. So I do not want to paint a red and then a yellow next to it. I'm going to make some space between them. So right now I'm going to paint this in. You see I'm painting the space that is made by the letter H the negative space. And I always paint in the direction of my bristles. My bristles go this way. I paint in this direction like I am painting the back of a, I mean not painting, like I am painting the back of a cat. And when I'm loading my brush, I go this direction also. I don't push down and twist because it bends my bristles. These are my bristles here. So I want to paint in the direction of my bristles. Okay, so here's my first one painted in. And if I was going to, let's say I was going to put a yellow up here, I wouldn't want to do that right now because if the yellow and the red go together, they will bleed together and that is not the look I want. Let's look at an example of when paints bleed together. So let's say if I'm going to paint, maybe I'm going to paint this right here. If I wanted to paint another color right next to it, I would need to wait. Otherwise, I might get some bleeding. I don't know if you can see that very well, but the yellow is actually bleeding into the red which is really pretty cool if that's what you want, but for this project, it was not what I was looking for. Of course, if that's how you want to do your project, you're the artist and you can decide. Maybe you want yours to bleed together. So I'm gonna jump over someplace else and put a red in someplace else. So I'm just going to put red in random places throughout my picture. about the next color. So let's say I want to do an orange. Let's pick up an orange. And I wouldn't want to put the orange here because it's too close to the red. Same here. It might bleed there. I can put some, I'd have to be careful here too. So I'm going to jump over to this part and put a little orange in here. Now 
what happens if I mix a little bit of orange with some red? So I'm just going to scrape a little orange in here. See how I scrape it off the ridge there and that deposits the paint into the pan here. Now I'm going to clean my brush and put some red in there. Let's see how different it looks. Maybe it'll look just the same. It's a little more reddish orange, isn't it? I like it. And then you can see that I did not go back in and erase my pencil lines, which I think would have been a good idea. So I think I'll stop and do that. probably won't be able to read their, our name or the words, and that's okay because we're using our names and all the words that we have in here. It's kind of a starting point, is the basis for our design, but we don't care if people read it or not. That's kind of why it is hidden. probably dry by now so I don't have to worry so much about bleeding but I still want to be careful I can tell my water is dirty so I need to get some clean water because it's making my yellow slightly orangey which is okay I mean it's a pretty color but I think I will need to get some clean water See how I'm jumping around as I paint? I try not to paint two wet colors next to each other. I want to give the paint a chance to dry before I paint next to it. Now I'm going to make a light green by mixing the green with the yellow. Now I think I'm going to get a darker green. Let's see how that does. Now I think I'm going to mix my green with a little blue. Oh, I like it already. That is a pretty turquoise. It's time for some purple. I don't really want to use black or gray because I think it's too dark, but you can definitely do that if you want to. So when I'm looking
looking at the color wheel here, I've got a purple and it's right next to red. So I can mix purple and red together and they will blend well. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed your Paul Clay project today. I would love to see what you created. If you want to, you can send me a picture of your artwork to Mrs. Hoover's Art Class at gmail.com. And remember, every day is a great day to make art.